Good morning, Calvary. Happy Monday. I hope God has blessed you on the 4th of July and you had a beautiful time celebrating the country that God has given to us and allowed us to live in because it is a place of freedom. It's a place of prosperity and you can be focused on all the problems or you can be focused on all the blessings. I choose to focus on the blessings. So, hey, we're talking about Jacob and Rachel and Leah. And if you don't know the story in Genesis 29, it's kind of crazy. Jacob has deceived his brother Esau, stolen his birthright, stolen his blessing. Esau wants to kill Jacob, so Jacob runs away. Uh, and, and his mom is part of the problem because she's like, I don't want you marrying these foreign women like your brother. So he goes to his uncle's land. Uh, he, he travels away. It's a, it's a long trip. And he gets there, and she wants him to marry uh, somebody who's part of their tribe, part of their family. Sounds kind of, you know, kinky, but weird, but... It's how they operated. And he runs into his uh, uncle's daughter, so it's really his cousin, and, and, and he falls in love. And so he makes an agreement with his uh, uncle that he's going to work for him for seven years for the privilege of marrying his daughter, uh, his daughter Rachel. And uh, so he puts in seven years. God blesses Laban, his uncle. God blesses Jacob. And at the end of that seven years, he goes to the wedding and, uh, and Laban gives him his older daughter, Leah. Now, I don't know how drunk you have to be to not recognize that you married the wrong daughter, but Jacob doesn't realize that he married the wrong woman until the morning. And then he's upset and he gets mad at Laban and Laban says, okay, I'll give you my other daughter too, but we gotta marry the older one off before the younger one. And so starts this crazy dysfunctional family, and, uh, and Jacob marries uh, Rachel and works another seven years for Laban uh, for free for the daughter. So what's the lesson here? Besides, don't trust your in-laws. Uh, I mean, that's not the lesson, okay? I hope you have in-laws you can trust. But uh, the lesson is really obvious. You reap what you sow. Galatians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If he sows to the flesh, from the flesh he will reap destruction. If he sows to the Spirit, from the Spirit he will reap eternal life. Uh, Jacob was a deceiver. Okay? He deceived his brother, stole his birthright, stole his blessing, all of that. What happened? He goes off, he falls in love, his father-in-law deceives him. You are going to reap what you sow. It is an inescapable truth in this world uh, and by the way, it is not karma. Karma is crap, and that's not what karma is. People misuse that all the time. It is reciprocity. You will reap what you sow. That's, that's a reality in God's world. It's true for Jacob. It's true for us. So I'm going to really encourage you to sow to the Spirit. Be a person of love. You know, show mercy, show kindness, show, show patience to people. It will come back to you. Be a person of mercy. You know, forgive as you've been forgiven. I mean, we kind of pray that in the Lord's Prayer, right? Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have sinned against us, right? So it's kind of what we pray for, so practice it. And, and, and practice generosity. Uh, Proverbs say the one who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. So what I want to encourage you to do is to know that you're going to reap what you sow. So choose to sow, choose to, sow to the Spirit and you will be blessed because it will come back to you. I hope that helps, and I hope you have a great day. God bless.